Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to solve some of the strength of materials MCQs, and it is going to be very helpful. So here, from question one, it says to avoid failure in structural element, which of the following condition must be satisfied? And the correct answer is B. Always your maximum induced stress should be less than or equal to the allowable stress so that your member will not fail. So whatever stress you are going to induce in the member should be less than or equal to what is allowed. All right. Now, number two says, if the percentage elongation of a material is equal or greater than 10%, then the material is classified as, so any material which has elongation greater or equal to 10 is a ductile material. Number three, which of the following materials can be classified as ductile? And stone, cast iron, ceramic, concrete and the answer is none of them all these they are brittle material so none of them is a ductile material number four which of the following cannot be negative so meaning these some of them can be negative which of them cannot be negative and that is the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is a positive value. Are we okay? All right. Now number five. If a material expands freely due to heating, it will develop, there will be no stress in the material. So any material which is allowed to expand under the action of temperature will have no stress in the and the six is the stress at which extension of the material takes place more quickly as compared to the increase in load. That is called yielding. So a material is said to be yielding when it extends more quickly compared to the increase in load. We know that the stress is proportional to what? The strain. But here, the more or a little load added will make it to what expand quickly in such situations we say there is what yielding so that means the material is at the yielding point that is d number seven which of the following materials have or has its poisons ratio to be greater than unity which is one and the answer is none of them there is no material with Poisson's ratio greater than unity, greater than one. All Poisson's ratios are less than one for any material. Are we okay? All right. So the range is falls between zero and what? And one. So there is nothing greater than one. Number eight. A steel bar of 2.5 meter long has a circular cross section of diameter 22 over half of its length and diameter 10 over the other half. How much would the bar elongate under a compressive load of 20 kN if the modulus of elasticity is 20 gigapascal? So here we want to know this is a bar. is one of its length and the other is having a diameter of this so this is the first diameter which is 22 so let's call this part as the 22 diameter and the other part is what 10 right 10 mm diameter and it is subjected to a compressive load and the load is what 20 kilo newton we have the E of the material to be 200 gigapascal. So what we are doing is the entire length 
for this bar is what? 2.5. And the diameter for each is taking half of its length. So meaning half of 2.5 is here and half of it is also at this part. And we have to find the elongation. So there will be elongation one at the first part, there will be elongation two at the other part. So in this situation, the total elongation T is going to be elongation at the first part plus the second part. And we know that with force given, elongation is going to be the force multiplying the length on area multiplying E. So first part of the length, E, the second length. So let me say the area one, the area two, and the E. So put it in this formula and you're going to get your total elongation. The force is constant. L is half of the total length. And the area is the diameter corresponding to the first part. The E is given. The load is constant. Half of the L2, the second area, and the E. And with that, when you punch, you are going to get the total elongation to be 1.92 mm. Please check your unit. If you are working in meters, make sure it is well uniform. And if it is in millimeters, make sure you do that also in uniform. Now, the 9 says the maximum theoretical value of Poisson's ratio is given us. So remember, the Poisson's ratio lies between 0 and 1. And theoretically, the maximum that we can have is even 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is the maximum one. Then, highest value of stress for which Hooke's law is applicable for given material is, so for the Hooke's law, stress is equal to E strain to be applicable, the material is supposed to be in the proportion limits. 11. The ability of a material to absorb energy without fracture is known as. So the material can absorb much energy without breaking or without getting a fracture. That is toughness. That material is very tough. 12. The slope of linear proportion of the shear stress strain diagram is. So as we can see from the Hooke's law, the proportion ratio say stress is proportion to strain and we introduce a constant e which is modulus of what elasticity if it is shear stress should be equal to g and strain and this constant is going to or when we plot shear against this and we get a straight line the slope of this is going to be modulus of rigidity that's the g are we okay 11. So this is pure calculation. A hollow cylinder 4 mm long has outside diameter and inner diameter to be that and that respectively. Find the deformation of the cylinder when it is carrying an axial tensile load and the E of the cylinder is given. So here the we know that the elongation is still PL on AE where P is the Force given the load given L is the length we have E we have which is the hundred what about the area so the area here is we want the area of the hollow cylinder and we have inner diameter and outer diameter so first your area is going to be pi d square on 4 we are going to assume the circular area for the surface. So first d1 minus pi d2 square on what? 4. And this is going to help you find your area. So first you put in the 75 and the 60. You subtract. You are going to get your total area. You bring it into the formula. And your answer is going to be the elongation of 1.26 mm. Check your unit if you are working in meters. 14. A shaft is required to transmit 200 kilo 
works while turning at 1.5 revolution per second. The allowable shear stress is 42 megapascal. The required shaft diameter would be. Now here we have the power transmitted is torque on what? The omega and the omega is given already in per second, which is 1.5. So the torque is going to be 2 power, which is 2 kilo over 1.5. And you're going to get your torque to be x. Now from the relation, shear on radius is equal to tau on j of the material. You'll be able to calculate for the diameter. This can be simplified as shear is given 16t. From the torque you are getting for the x on pi d cube and you can make the cube the subject then later find the d and when you do that you see that the answer you are getting is none of the above are we okay so this is it none of the above yes now 15 it says determine the polar moment of inertia of a shaft this Diameter running at 240 rev per minute, which can withstand a maximum shear of that. So the polar moment of inertia for a solid shaft J is given as pi on 1, 32 d raised to the power 4. And we have the diameter given. So put it inside and you're going to get your polar moment of inertia to be A. Now, 16, a load of 5 kN is to be raised with the help of a steel wire. Find the maximum, or this is the minimum diameter of the wire if the stress is not to exceed 100 megapascal. Are we okay? So, this is just using the stress formula. Stress is equal to force on what? Area. And this is a steel wire. And the surface area of a wire is also what? Circular. So we are going to assume circular, which is pi on 4 d squared. We have the stress given as 100 megapascal. We have the force given. Make d squared a subject and find your d. And your answer will also for as none of the above. All right. 17. A copper bar of length 2 meter is at temperature of negative 10 if the material property are E is given. And we also have the coefficient of expansivity. We also have it is heated up to 50. So we have to find the new length, which is the new length is going to be the original length on one plus this change in what temperature. So we can put in the length, which is two in terms of mm, which is 2000, one plus a, which is the expansion coefficient and change in temperature, which is going to be 50 minus minus 10, and that is going to give you what 60, and you will get your final length that is 2001.44 mm. Number 18 determine the diameter of a solid steel shaft which can transmit 50 kilowatts at 60 rpm if the maximum shear is not to exceed that. So here we also have to find the, we are having the power, so power is 2 pi nt on 60. We have to find the t. We have everything. So once you get t to be x from this relation, we are going to use the relation. Here is going to be 16t on pi d cube. Here we have the torque given from this part have your share given to be 50 and you make d cube the subject after that you take the cubic root of the answer and you are going to arrive at 9.32 centimeters remember this is in terms of centimeters so 
try to convert your final answer to centimeters in order to get what is here. 19. The ratio of linear strain to lateral strain is called, pay attention here, Poisson's ratio is lateral strain to linear strain. If you turn it, it is not equal to x on y. So the answer is none of the above. Number 20, it is desired to transmit this power by means of a circular which is rotating at this. The allowable stress is this. Find the required diameter. These questions are recurrent questions and here if it is omega is in per second then you are going to just say power is t omega where your torque is going to be 90 kilo on 3.5 let's say this is x then since we are given the stress then our stress is going to be 16 multiplying the t pi d q we make diameter the subject from here and we are going to get it to be 142.7 cm 21. In a tensile test on mass steel specimen, the breaking stress as compared to ultimate stress is. So, if you are doing tensile test on mass steel, its breaking stress compared to its ultimate stress is always less. Are we okay? It is always less. Which of the following materials is not elastic? It will not be able to undergo elasticity or cannot now elongate and return to its normal position and it is most elastic yes it is most elastic it can do elongation and it can also return to its normal position that is still because brass plastic rubber they are what not elastic and glass all right, so 23, the property of a material by virtue of a body for it to return to its original position and shape after the removal of low, that is elasticity, yes. So as we saw here, steel is what? Elastic, so it can be able to return to its original shape when the load is removed. 24. The value of Poisson's ratio for cast iron is always between 0 0.23 to 0 0.27. So this constant, you have to be grabbing them, know them of it. 25. The ratio of direct stress to volumetric strain in case of a body subjected to three mutual perpendicular stresses of equal intensity is equal to the bulk modulus that's what we call the bulk modulus k change in pressure to to the ratio of direct stress to volumetric p and that is bulk modulus flow stress corresponds to so we have what we call flow stress and i think it is quite tricky you may think it is fluids in motion that's why we call flow stress no when you say stress or flow stress it is ref referring to plastic deformation of solids so when solids undergo plastic deformation then we call that stress as a flow stress 27 the maximum strain energy that can be stored in a body is called so maximum energy strain energy should be toughness it is the toughness of the material. 28. A material capable of absorbing large amount of energy before fracture is known as toughness or the capability is the toughness. As it can store much energy, it prevents it from what? Undergoing fracture and still toughness. 29. A beam is loaded as cantilever. When we say cantilever, we fix one end of the beam and we leave the other end freely. If the load at the end is increased, so we have, let's say, a load applied here. If it is 10 and we increase this to 20, the failure will occur as well. 
it can occur at any place. You understand? So the fail will work anywhere. And our last example, which is the safe twisting moment for a compound shaft is equal to and the safe twisting moment is none of the above. Thank you for watching this episode. Take your time and go back again. Those that involves calculation, try to solve them and verify the answer. See you in the next episode.